So you just got yourself a brand new iPad and a brand new Apple Pencil because you want to get into that digital note-taking space and get rid of, you know, the classic pen and paper situation. But there are hundreds, and I mean hundreds of note-taking applications in the App Store that all promise the same thing, which is to keep you as organized as possible and make sure that you have everything that you need when you are taking notes, whether it is for school, for your professional job, or for just personal note-taking uses. So which note-taking app do you go with? Do you go into the App Store and pay for one? Do you use a freemium one? Do you use a free one? Or do you use the free, and the reason I use quotes in the free for the Apple Notes app is because obviously you have to pay for an Apple product to use the Apple Notes app, but it is included at least when you do purchase an expensive Apple product. But of all these applications, which one is actually the best one for you? So in this video, we're gonna be going over my personal top five. And the reason I'm saying my personal is because each note-taking app has its own differentiating factor, right? Some of them have an infinite canvas, some of them have you know integrations that work well in the corporate setting, and others are just great for simple note-taking, and maybe you don't want something that's super complex. So in this video, like I said, we're gonna be going over my top five personal note-taking apps. We're gonna go from number five all the way to my favorite one to my number one, and they're all gonna be listed down in the description below. So without further ado, let's talk about my top five note-taking apps for your iPad. And again, this will be for any iPad. You don't need to have an iPad Pro, this will work with the iPad Mini, iPad Air, iPad 9. So whichever iPad you have, these applications will work with that iPad. But let's talk about them. Before we do get started, if you are trying to get into that digital note-taking space, I highly, highly recommend getting yourself a screen protector because I'm not a huge fan of using the Apple Pencil on a bare iPad screen. I know that it's made out of that scratch-resistant glass, but at the same time, over time, that Apple Pencil will start to scratch up your screen. So like I said, I do highly recommend getting yourself a screen protector. I personally use Paperlike and I've been using them for years. I'll link them down below if you guys do wanna check them out. But without wasting any more time, let's talk about number five on the list for note-taking applications on the iPad. So application number five is Evernote. And Evernote is one of those legacy applications that's been around pretty much the entirety of the length of the App Store has been out or since the first iPad was released. And this app has three different versions. You have the freemium version, which is pretty limited in its use. Then you have an $8 version, which is for personal use. And then a $10 a month version, which is more enterprisey, more professional, that's what they call it. And one of the biggest things that I noticed about Evernote in general was that it's very type heavy first. So if you're trying to get into digital note taking with an Apple Pencil, then maybe this is one that you do skip out on. But overall, it does a great job of organizing all of your notes wherever you need them. You can have them in separate notebooks. In each of those notebooks, you can have them categorized by day or by subject or whatever the case may be. But like I mentioned, this is a type first notes application. So if you want to take this to like a math class, for instance, where you're doing a lot of equations, a lot of proofs, a lot of things like that, and you want to use handwritten notes, obviously it could still handle the handwritten notes, but it works a lot better with typed out notes. And then there are three main things that jumped out at me in terms of differentiators for Evernote. The first one has to be the dashboard view. So this is the first application that gives you kind of a dashboard view to let you know exactly what's going on in your notes application in general. So you have different views in terms of what you wrote last or what was the last type of note that you did take, you know, what types of stickers are you using? You have a whole section in there to upload images that are frequently used and you can just, again, almost like a web page editor or maybe like a Canva editor, you can upload images that you're gonna be reusing over and over again. And you do have the ability to customize that dashboard, but obviously that is in part of their paid plan. So if you guys aren't willing to pay for it, again, Evernote is pretty limited on the free basis. So keep that in mind when making a decision to go with Evernote. Another big selling point for Evernote, especially for larger corporations that are trying to use Evernote as their main collaborative software, is that it integrates well with all the big players. So it integrates with Slack, with Microsoft Teams, with Salesforce, with Google Calendar, and pretty much anything that you can think of, it's gonna integrate pretty well with. So if you are somebody that needs integration into Slack, for instance, Evernote's gonna be something that you should heavily consider. And then lastly, another big selling point is it's infinite PDF converter. So inside of Evernote, you're able to create, you know, infinite pages of PDF documents and export them into classic PDF documents in order to share across, you know, maybe a classroom, a project group, your sales team if you're using Evernote in a professional setting. So Evernote overall is number five, just because it does lack some freemium features. So if you are somebody that really wants to take full advantage of it, you can't unless you pay for it. And for somebody like say, take handwritten notes, like myself personally, you know, Evernote, even though you can do it, it's not super optimized for handwritten notes. So that takes care of Evernote. That is number five on my list. And now let's move on to number four. And number four has to be GoodNotes 5. It's funny that, you know, GoodNotes 5 is actually my number four. But GoodNotes 5 also comes with a freemium feature, but this freemium version, from how I used it, because I stuck with the freemium version, you get three total notebooks. So if you're somebody that wants to separate things based on like subjects and you have like five, six subjects in school, 
then maybe you should go for the paid version. The paid version is just a one-time payment of $8 for the lifetime use. So it's a very fair deal in my opinion. But if you're somebody who wants to kind of just maybe self-organize inside of the three notebooks to use a freemium version, by all means go for it. That's pretty much what I do because it seems that you can add as many pages as you would like into each notebook. It just gets a little crazy to organize them you know, by subject or maybe my subject matter or things like that if you don't break it up by notebooks. And GoodNotes is really optimized for handwritten features. So immediately you're greeted with kind of a handwriting or a notebook vibe. You know, you have your college rule notebook, you have your graph paper notebook. So those are all things that you're greeted with immediately as opposed to having like a white paper blank canvas that a lot of these other note taking apps do make you start off with. And my favorite feature has to be the ability to zoom into certain sections of your canvas or your note sheet. Let's say you have a large notebook filled with a bunch of different graphics and a bunch of different diagrams, and maybe on one section of the diagram you wanna write down a tiny little note to remember for later. You can actually hover over, zoom into that little piece, write in like your full size handwriting, then zoom back out, and the ratio will stay the same of the rest of the notebook or that rest of that sheet of paper. So I love that. And I call this kind of like a reverse infinite canvas. We're gonna talk about what an infinite canvas is when, once we talk about Microsoft OneNote. But with this one, it's pretty much you can zoom in almost as much as you want to take some small handwritten notes. It does have a limitation in terms of how much you can zoom in, but I love that feature that you can zoom in in order to take down some really tiny notes and then zoom back out to have your normal sheet of paper. You also have the ability to search within the document and you're able to search within the document even if you do have those handwritten notes. So I'm sure there's a little bit of live text APIs going on in there for them to be able to understand saying like typing in the word hello and then being able to search throughout all of your notes to see where you actually wrote hello in handwriting. But that is GoodNotes 5 in a nutshell. Overall, from a freemium perspective, it is highly recommended because you get a lot of the features that you would get on the actual premium version. You're just limited to how much you can actually use it with those three different notebooks. But like I said, it seems like you can add up as many different sheets of paper, quote unquote paper, into each one of those notebooks and you'll be good to go. So now let's talk about number three, which has to be Notability. And the main reason Notability is on here is for one simple feature that I think is absolutely outstanding. And yes, you can go you know, bypass and probably find out exactly what you're looking for on a third party app or on Google and then bring it over. But the fact that this is built in is amazing. So the number one thing that makes Notability number three on this list is that math conversion feature. So math conversion is exactly what it sounds like. You're able to write down a handwritten math problem. You know, it can be as simple as one plus one or as complicated as a whole, you know, algebra equation. You circle it and you math convert it inside of there and then it solves that problem for you, which I think is absolutely amazing for anybody that's, that again is using Notability inside of a classroom setting like a math class, like an algebra, like a geometry class. I think it's absolutely amazing and it's what makes Notability one of the top three best note-taking apps that I've ever used. Now again, from a freemium perspective, it doesn't do that much for you. You are limited to only three of their tools and math conversion is not included in one of those tools in the free version. So you do have to go with the paid version. The paid version I believe is $9 for the first year and then $12 a year in every subsequent year. So, so far it's kind of in the middle, you know, you had GoodNotes 5, which is a one-time lifetime payment. And then you had something like Evernote, which is a monthly basis payment, which I think Evernote's a little bit expensive, but it does have a lot of nice features and integrations in the professional world. And then another big feature inside of Notability is their yearly planning tool. And you can have, there's a bunch of different templates inside of Notability for you to either download or use directly from Notability in order to plan out your entire year. Like what are your checklists that you need to get done? What are some projects that you're looking to get done on, a, on that yearly basis? And also it gives you a day-by-day -day breakdown of a to-do list. So this is kind of an all-encompassing application. You can use it for to-do lists, you can use it for grocery lists, you can use it to take intensive notes and everything in between, you know, you have your shape shifter, which is in there. Everything is included inside of Notability. And for the price, it's pretty decent in my opinion. So now let's move on to our top two. And number two on this list, leave a comment down below if you guys guessed it correctly. Number two has to be Microsoft OneNote. Now I personally was a huge user of Microsoft OneNote, especially early on in my career. Microsoft OneNote gave people the ability who worked in a corporate setting, for instance, or even as a student, because if you are a student, most universities, most colleges, especially here in the US, will give you a Microsoft subscription as part of your tuition payment. Nothing is ever free, it's included in whatever you're paying with, right? But it's technically free whenever Whenever you do sign up for a school, they'll give you a Microsoft subscription and inside of that Microsoft subscription, you are given access to Microsoft OneNote. And then same thing on the corporate side. My first job out of college was a you know, Microsoft house. They use IBM ThinkPads. They gave everybody a ThinkPad laptop in order to use it. And with that laptop and with that email, you were given a Microsoft subscription. And I wanted a way to be able to use my iPad Pro 
in my professional setting with an IBM ThinkPad. And the only way to really do that is to use Microsoft on the iPad Pro. And we'll have a video going over Microsoft on the iPad Pro later on. So definitely stay subscribed because there's a lot of advancements that Microsoft has been investing in in order to make sure iPad users are happy with whatever Microsoft is bringing. But with OneNote specifically, you were able to take notes on your OneNote application on the iPad itself, and then it would sync across all your OneNote applications, especially on that ThinkPad that I would use on a daily basis. I was not able to use you know, my MacBook Air or my iPad as my main computer at that job, but OneNote on the iPad let me use my iPad in a productive you know, corporate setting, and I absolutely loved it. And even if you aren't a student or in the corporate world and you wanna get Microsoft OneNote, it's honestly not that expensive. It's $9 a month for the entire Microsoft 365 subscription. So that's Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Outlook, and then included in that is OneNote as well. So for $9, you get all those productivity applications and OneNote included in there. I think it's actually a great deal if you are a Microsoft user and you're familiar with it and you wanna stay in that world. But one of the best features about Microsoft OneNote, you know, yes, it organizes everything very, very easily. You have your notebooks, you have your different subjects in there. You know, you have your different things categorized by date. You can tag things, you can use different colors. You see the toolbar is amazing. You have the ability to handwrite, to use your finger. So you don't even need your actual Apple Pencil in order to take handwritten notes if you don't want to, but it's a great application. But the number one thing, the number one selling point is this infinite canvas idea, which I think is coming over to the iPad natively with an application called Freeform, but we're not absolutely there yet. But with the infinite canvas, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're able to start taking notes and then zoom out to make your canvas even bigger and you can keep going. I think there is actually technically a limit to how much you can extend out, but it's very, very big. So you have a lot of area to play with with a one single Microsoft Note sheet. So overall, it does get my stamp of approval. I used it for years before I switched over to our number one choice, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But Microsoft OneNote, if you are somebody that's locked into that Microsoft ecosystem, but you wanna use an iPad and still be able to stay productive and have it on all your different devices, this is the absolute way to go. And then the last application, my personal number one, has to be, drum roll please, the Apple Notes application. Now I know in the comments below, people are gonna call me an Apple sheep or something like that along those lines, but the Apple Notes app over the years has gotten so good and it, and it does just enough for me to justify using it as my main note-taking app. For a simple digital note-taking app, it works wonderfully. You, you can categorize things based on subject, based on company, based on you know date, based on whatever you want. You can now add tags to there, which was brought over on iPadOS 14. You have the ability to convert handwritten notes into text. And stay tuned for a future video because I have a complete walkthrough of the notes application on iPadOS 16 because there's a lot of little nuances and features that the Apple Notes app has built in natively, especially with the Apple Pencil 2 that work absolute wonders. And the fact that it kind of is in that wall garden is even better. But again, the Apple Notes app does everything that you would want it to, right? It has all the geometric shapes that you would want to, so you can handwrite a circle if you want, and then it'll turn into a perfect circle. It works great with both handwritten and typed out notes because I use both of them. Being able to convert handwritten notes into text, being able to use your Apple Pencil as an eraser for both handwritten text and typed typed out text, the list goes on and on. And then even if you are in that walled garden and you have, let's say an iPhone or you have an, a MacBook Air and you take a screenshot on either one of those and you have your iPad next to you, the iPad will recognize that and then you can see and actually touch up that screenshot from your other devices on your iPad and then save it back on that device. So it's just, again, being in that walled garden, obviously, you're kind of trapped in there, but it does have its perks when everything is so easily integrated, especially natively with the Apple Notes application. And like I said in the very beginning, even though yes, you have to buy an Apple piece of hardware in order to access Apple Notes, once you have that piece of hardware, you have the Notes application for free for the rest of your life and it syncs across your iCloud. So whatever I write down on my iPad Pro will go onto my Apple Notes app on my MacBook Air, it'll go on my Apple Notes app on my iPhone and everywhere across. I even think it'll show up on the, on the Apple Watch, but don't quote me on that one. So those are my top five apps for digital note taking on the iPad itself. Like I said, it'll work perfectly with any iPad that you have, whether it is a fully super loaded iPad Pro M1 12.9 that you spent $2,500 on, or if it's a baseline model iPad 9 generation that you spent $300 on. And that's what's beautiful about the Apple ecosystem and the App Store. Apple normally, up until iPadOS 16, didn't discriminate whether you spent $300 or whether you spent $2,000 on an iPad. Everything worked exactly the same. But again, we are getting some new features like Stage Manager that's gonna be proprietary to the M1 lineup of iPad Pros and iPad Air. But overall, like you saw, my favorite note-taking app was the Apple Notes application, just because it's so easy to use among all of my devices all at once with zero issues. So my overall recommendation, if you are an Apple user, is to try out the Notes app. And if there's something missing that you absolutely need, 
then there is going to be another application out there for you, probably for a price, like the other applications that I listed earlier today. So if you guys do have something missing inside of Apple Notes, try one of these other four out that I mentioned, like GoodNotes 5, Notability, OneNote, and Evernote. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys did enjoy, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the very end. And leave a comment down below. What's your favorite note-taking app and why? I'm curious to know why somebody would choose Evernote over, let's say, OneNote, or maybe why somebody would choose Apple Notes over Notability. Very curious to know what you guys use your notes applications for in the comments down below. But if you guys wanna check out some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, or macOS, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando.